how the heck does this guy make 20K a month online? How did you make the full-time pivot to online? We were like shooting, you know, four times a week. It wasn't fun. You know, it wasn't fun. And we knew that it wasn't for us. Right? It was like, if you're serious about this and actually want to build a business that's sustainable, you know, you're going to have to build out your personal brand eventually. So might as well just start off. Um, I think you should fully focus on one platform and that platform is going to be Instagram. I only spent 1K in ads and I collected seven. Yo, if you are an agency owner, coach, consultant, and you're wanting to scale from zero or wherever you're at all the way up to $30,000 a month, this interview is going to be killer for you to watch. It's with my client, Julian, who has absolutely crushed it. He was doing, you know, 10 to 15 days of videography before, then he scaled up to around 20, 25K a month with his agency. And he recently just added 7K a month um, to his offer using the social funnel, paid ads and converting people on Instagram using the DMs. So the social funnel is what I teach in my coaching program. Um, and he's a killer client. He's now pivoting to a consulting offer, uh, working with real estate investors. So super interesting to hear how we went from nothing to over $20,000 a month. Um, if you guys want to follow him, his stuff will be down below his Instagram, his YouTube. Um, he has awesome stuff too, so go check it out. And if you guys want to work with me, just like Julian does as one of my clients, um, I'm launching what I call the community on August 1st. It is a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call with me. You get all the course content I've ever made at gracelandlupus.com, which is our business name. Um, you get, a, you get a, weekly group coaching call with me personally hosting it. And then you get three collectives, which are in-person meetups every year at dope places like Bali, Greece, all that stuff. So if you're interested in getting in before the launch, um, just go ahead and shoot me a DM on Instagram. My Instagram is down below and we'll get right into the interview. Yo, I am here with my guy, Julian. Uh, Julian and I have been working together for maybe two months ish, month and a half, Almost. two months. Maybe a little, yeah. a little less. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a month and a half. Um, I think we we hopped on a on a sales call a long time ago, and, and I was like, um, <laughs> and I think it took like five minutes to to like, all right, yep, let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's do it. And I was like, all right, let's roll, bro. Yeah, I'm down. So ever since then, we started working together. He was running a, a done for you agency. We'll, we'll talk about that. Kind of is is pivoting a little bit now, so we'll talk about that too. But dude, why don't you give a little intro? Of like, how did you get into business? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people wondering like. How the heck does this guy make 20K a month online um, at a young yeah. age? But yeah, give, me a, yeah, give me a rundown of, of Julian's little life story. Yeah. <laughs> so what it is, um, I have a partner, so it's Corey and I, but we've been running Just Create Studio, which is the agency for like over a year now. We started off in the whole like wedding real estate game for like videography and stuff. So like your generic videographer stuff. And then all of a sudden someone um, asked us to kind of shoot short form content for him. And we're like... This is when like reels and TikTok was just like just blown up. And we were like, all right, might as well. Let's um let's try it out. And then pretty much short story, we kind of just transitioned from um and how much do you think, from there. How much do you think you were making doing the in-person videography stuff? And then how did you make the full-time pivot to online? Yeah, yeah. So we were we were actually making, I think, around like like I would say like 12 to 15k a month, right? We had three clients that were paying us a pretty good amount. But we were like shooting, you know, four times a week, right? Like we were just always outside, um, just yeah. always shooting content and stuff. It was, it wasn't fun. You know, it wasn't fun. And we knew that it wasn't for us. So we were like, okay, well, let's try to transition this and try to do it for people around the nation, right? Just figure out how we can be all online. So, and then that's how we made that transition. And then from there on, we've kind of just, you know, grew the agency. So we did. So you decided to go all online. And I think most people, when they think like, all right, online business most people's big question is like dude how do you start how do you get the first yeah. time how do you like yeah. get this thing off the ground obviously right now i think you guys are doing around 20k a month right somewhere yep. around there yep. um so that's awesome but like most people are like dude how do i even just get this off the ground to like 10k a month? Yeah. like what what would be your advice to somebody who's like zero to 10k just trying to get their offer off the ground. Maybe it's done for your agency. Maybe it's a coaching program, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, just like client acquisition. What does that look like for you? That's a great, yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, the first thing I would do is really figure out who, like niche down and really figure out who you are going to help. Is it going to be um, relationship coaches? Is it going to be like restaurants, whatever, whatever your niche is, figure it out, um, figure out how you can help solve a problem for them. So whether it's build a personal brand, whether it's get more clients, figure that out. And then once you have that somewhat set in stone, right? Like you're not going to have it figured out when you're just starting out, but you have like a good idea. And then you just start personally, I would start building out my personal brand. Cause I think that's when I, you know, this agency really started going for me. It was the personal brand. Yep. Right. Cause, um, 
I mean, let's be real nowadays. It's like anyone can send out outbound messages and stuff. And like, it's just for me personally, outbound might work for some people, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah, it, the thing never, for uh, the thing for outbound, for what I what I tell people is like, all right, let's say that you build your entire agency, your entire business off outbound. All right, you you, yep. you built it off LinkedIn outreach, and it's awesome. You build it up yep. to a hundred k a month, even right. Yeah. Now you want to pivot to taking equity in companies. You want to pivot to coaching. You want to pivot to consulting. You want to pivot your offer to something more scalable with more leverage, and you have to start from ground zero again, right? But if you have a personal brand, you can make the agent, you can make the pivot from like agency, which 100%. I did to coaching yep. in yep. three months, you know, like yep. it's a very quick pivot. So great point agree. there, building out your personal brand during while you're still building that kind of first starter business. Exactly. And I mean, with everything, you should be thinking long term, right? So the personal brand is only going to help you out long term, right? It's like if you're serious about this and actually want to build a business that's sustainable, you know, you're going to have to build out your personal brand eventually. So might as well just start off. Right. Okay. So, so someone comes to you, Julian, they say, all right, Julian, I'm committed to this long term. I'm going to build a personal brand. I'm going to start, you know, whether it's a, some sort of online service-based business, coaching, consulting agency, I'm going to start one of those. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to build out my personal brand. I'm committed to that long term. What is the best way for me to go about doing that for myself? Like there's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's LinkedIn, there's yeah. YouTube. There's there's threads now. Twitter, Twitter. Like, yeah. What do, I, what, do, what do I do? Like what what, yeah. what would be your? What would I'm going to talk from personal experience, and um, I think you should fully focus on one platform, and that platform is going to be Instagram. Um, and there's only reason for that. It's because of the DMs. Um, you know, yeah, Twitter might have DMs, but again, I'm talking I'm talking from personal experience. I think the easiest way to get reach and be able to reach out your ideal clients is through Instagram. And to be able to actually convert those people is Instagram because you have the DMs. You can just directly reach out to them. And let's be honest, whenever you're at a bar, you're ever at a restaurant, you're ever at a networking event, and they ask for they're gonna ask for your Instagram. Either your number or your Instagram. They ain't asking you for your Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. They're asking for your Instagram. <laughs> That's so you know true. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like build that out, you know? Yeah. And the uh the thing is like most people think of a lead as like, okay, I need to build an audience and then I need to like collect their name, their phone number, and their email. And then I can kind of like, you know, sell them because I have their yeah. information. Yeah. Whereas on Instagram, you don't need any of that. Nope. All a lead is, is someone that you have direct contact with that you yep. can message. And yep. Instagram, you can call, you can message, you can FaceTime, you can send nope. videos, you, you can, can send do pictures, anything, yeah. you can send links, right? Yep. That's why Instagram, in my opinion, is the best platform. Okay, so now Julian, I'm coming to you as an agency owner. I have sort of like everything, sort of like I have an idea of what I want to do. Yeah, I know I'm committed to both of my personal brand on Instagram. What's next? How do I actually do that? What's what's your advice in terms of like building the personal brand? Would you go kind of like the system that I built out, which is like the social funnel? Yeah. Would you go with just organic content? What what would yeah. you do? Um. So this 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 is a great question because I was originally or an organic guy. I'm like fully organic, I'm like no ads. You need to build it organic. Yeah. Um, and if you guys want to look at his Instagram, check out down below. His Instagram should be linked down below. He has thirty thousand yeah. followers, so he's he's been on that organic grind. Forty two. Um. Forty two. Damn. Okay. So you grown a lot <laughs> since last time we talked. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I've like, I've been in the organic game. I started my account in December of 2022. I grew it up to like. Um, I don't even know how much in, until I start running ads. But to get to your question, um, I would focus. Bef I would focus on building organic until you've kind of figured out your voice and your messaging, and then switch over to the social funnel and start running paid. Right? Because um, if you're start if if you're just starting out, most of the time, ninety nine percent of the time, you're, you're really not going to find your voice. You aren't going to be most. You know, you're not going to be too comfortable on the camera. Um, so like it's not there's really no point of spending money because that money will probably not be used <laughs> the best and if you're just yeah. starting you're probably on a budget so i'd focus on organic and when i'm talking about messaging um what messaging means is just like like you, you want to be talking in your ideal clients like language right you want to be talking about their pain points their ideal outcomes and um yeah just kind of figure figuring that out figuring out your voice what your personal beliefs are what your passions are yeah. And then start running the social funnel. And what you're talking about is very, very underrated. I think most people focus on like the offer. How can I have the best offer, yeah. right? They've read $100 million offers by Alex Ramos. And now they're like, yeah. all right, what guarantees can I put in place? What, what's the offer going to look like? The I help statement, right? Yeah. Most people focus in on that when they're starting out. And in reality, that's not what's important. No. What's important 
is messaging, is being yep. able to speak, like you said, your client's language, your ideal prospect's language, because when they yep. hear your, your content, when they hear the messages you send to them on Instagram, they should be able to feel like, holy crap, this guy knows my problems yep. at the back of his hand. Yep. Let me book a call and just see if he exactly. has something, if he can help me. Because it exactly. sounds like he knows exactly what my problem is. So yeah. that's that's key is messaging. Okay, now I've built out everything. I have my messaging. <laughs> What's next? You have your messaging. Then you just start implementing the social funnel, which is um, pretty much what Grayson teaches. It's just... And- and uh, would you, by the way, would you, before you implement like paid ad social funnel, would you kind of like try and acquire clients organically? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, of course, I would, I would try to acquire um, clients organically. I would, you're probably not going to get your ideal clients following you organically because it's just, that's just how the algorithm works. But try messaging people who follow you. See if they're somewhat qualified and, you know, just start a conversation with them and then try to get them on a call. And also you can, if you're just starting out and you have somewhat of a personal brand, you can try some outbound as well. But um, yeah, that would be kind of the next thing. I figure out my messaging. Try to get some clients organically, just straight from your following, whoever engages with you. And then, um, yeah, and just slowly get into that, to that social funnel. Okay, so for someone looking for like, Julian, I know this is great advice, but like I need, I need numbers. I need like how, how much revenue should I be doing before I start implementing I got you know, you. the whole social funnel? Like, should I get to 10 K? Should I get to five? What, 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 how, how long do I do this organic grind for? Yeah, I would say, um, I would say if you're making 5 K a month, I think you can start implementing the social funnel. You don't have to be spending crazy amount of money on your ads. Um, but I would say, I would say 5 K a month, right? Cause it's, for for me personally, I like taking more risk. I like just getting out there and just figuring it out. So if you're someone who can tolerate that risk and are okay with not having too much money in the bank, which I mean, with all the money you should be getting, you should be reinvesting back, right? But um, yeah, I would say 5K a month. Perfect. Okay. So I've got the agency. We're doing 5K a month now. Yeah. And I've got an offer. Let's say I'm, I'm helping... Uh, I'm helping <laughs> med spa owners uh, scale to 30K a month, right? Okay. So I'm, I'm building up my personal brand of a bunch of med spa owners. Um, and I, and I now have, I have two clients. They're each paying me 2,500 a month. I've got, you know, my rent's a thousand bucks. I got food for a thousand bucks. I got, I got, I got two to three K to spend on ads. What's, uh, what's the game plan now? The social funnel. Damn, I'm throwing some numbers out there. Okay. <laughs> um, wait, so repeat that. You have 1K in rent. So I got I got like maybe one to 2K to spend on ads a month. Right okay. Now. Okay. Is that, is it, can I, can I make something work with that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to give you some bit of context, I only spent 1K in ads and I collected seven. So um, yeah, I think if you have your messaging down and stuff, you can spend a K. Spend okay. a K in ads in the first month. And yeah. um yeah, make sure think, your ad is is really well optimized, right? And yeah. yeah, I think most people when they think of like ads, they think like, all right, what's my ROAS, right? Like what's the oh, yeah, number? yeah. And yeah. and that's that's a great number to look at. Is like, you know, what's my return on ad spend? If I spend a yeah. thousand, how much do I get? Ten thousand back? Do I get five thousand back? And most people they hear like these crazy ROAS of like, I think my ROAS is like twenty two right now, which <laughs> like, I don't even know if I should like yeah. should I should I promote that because it sounds fake, but like most people think ROAS and with the, with a direct response funnel, like, yeah, think ROAS, think what's my exact direct yeah, return the on my ad spend. Yeah. With the social funnel, where you're basically paying Instagram to build your audience for you, mm-hmm. ROAS is a good number to look at, but honestly, the more, more important thing is, am I building an audience of people that are potential, you know, prospects? So, that's a hundred percent. That's, that's a hundred percent true. That's a great point. Cause so what did that journey funnel, look like for you then? You got, you know, you were on the organic grind for a long time. You got to maybe like 10, 15 organically. Yeah, it was, it was like 15. Yeah. Okay. So you got to 15 organically with the agency and we'll talk about what you're doing now in a second, but yeah, you got to 15 of the agency. You started running some paid ads. I think you added like 5,800 in, in monthly recurring revenue with like the, the paid ad side. Right. Or yeah. Like well, that was, team. that was just in one week. And then I think in total it was seven. Boom. Kill it. Yeah. So Seven fifty eight hundred in one week added, but seven k total. So now you're you know you you just crossed twenty k a month, and right now you're you're looking at the you're going to the future. And what is it that you're building now, moving forward? Um, with I know we had talked about it this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, should I give a bit of context, or should I just 
yeah. pretty much talk about the future. Yeah, give some context. Yeah. Yeah. So um if I were so with the whole problem with the organic game, right? If if you're trying to chase views and stuff, which was what I was doing, I was just trying to chase views. I was making videos on AI, all this bullshit. Um and you're going to attract the wrong people. You're gonna have a following, but you're gonna attract the wrong people, right? So that kind of messed me up because when I started running paid, I was attracting the wrong people, right? I was attracting, um, I don't wanna say brokies, but I just wasn't attracting the people who are going to pay me and build my business. So what I'm doing forward is um, I'm niching down hard and I'm really gonna try to solve a specific problem for a specific group of people, yeah. right? Now, what that's gonna do is, yeah, my views might drop a little bit, right i might not be getting as many followers but my content is going to convert a lot more moving forward well at least i hope yeah. so but i'm i know so yeah so, and you almost got to think about like what you really want like do you want profit yeah. or do you want to yeah. do you want 100%. status like, do you want, yeah. you, want, you want to make actual money every single month or do you want to be known for a hundred percent making for making like whatever it is yeah um and like when you're a when you're a kid you don't dream about running a consulting program for <laughs> dentists, right? Like, yeah. like as kids, we don't dream about like, I'm going to have a consulting business for a dentist one day, yeah. or I'm going to have a coaching program for, for real estate investors. Like you're launching here. Yeah. You don't think that as a kid, but now you're thinking like, okay, the best way to actually make profit every single month, 20, 30, yeah. 40 in profit a month, niche down. Don't worry about how many followers do I have? Think of them yeah. as leads. How many leads do yeah. I have? And a lead is somebody actually ready to buy. So you might yep. have 30,000 followers, but yep. how many leads do you got? Exactly. So, so talk about yeah. what you're doing. I'm moving forward. Yeah. So um, right now I'm just going to be focusing fully on real estate investors. Um, I mean, for my agency, I'll pretty much, I would say like 80% of my clients are real estate investors. And I always see a common problem they're having. It's being able to stay profitable with ads to help scale their coaching program. Or that it's just it's just super expensive to get people into the program because they're, they're they're running their traditional way webinars, um, you know, to the VSLs to the funnels. So what I'm going to be doing is um, I saw that as I see it as an opportunity. So I'm going to really niche down on them. Um, I'm going to try to talk in their language, right? And I'm just going to with my ads with my ads specifically target them, but with my content, I mean, it's still going to be somewhat broad, but. It's going to be trying to kind of pre-sell all of the stuff so I can get them into, into the program. Yep. Cool. Okay. Sweet. So what's now the, what's now the vision with this? I don't know if you call it consulting coaching. Yeah. Consulting, um, I would say. consulting. Yeah. Cool. What do you, what's the vision with this, you know, new consulting offer, like moving forward for you, you know, to some people watching 20, you know, scaling this thing in 20, 30 K a month in the next three months might sound crazy. Yeah. To some people watching it, it might be like, oh, that's pretty doable, but yeah. everyone's in a different spot with their, yeah. you know, kind of beliefs. Yeah. Um, but what's the, like the next three to six months for you? What does this look like um, in terms of like revenue, profit? What does, you know? Yeah. So what I I want to add um, in the next six months, by the end of the year, I would like to be around twenty k a month, just from new people, right? Just from new people. So. Um, we're still going to be keeping all of our current clients on the on the agency side, but from brand new people, I would like to be at 20k a monthly recurring revenue. Now, I mean, with the profit margins, right? The, for any consultant, kind of coach, or somewhere around what 80 percent, 70 to 80 percent, right? I don't know what yours are, Grayson. Yeah. 85, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's going to be the goal for the end of the month, or not the end of the month, the end of the year. Yeah, killer, dude. That's awesome. All right, well, we're we're finishing up here. What is sort of like the, the number one thing you'd leave with anybody, whether they're trying to go from zero to 10 K a month or whether they're trying to go from 10 to a hundred. Yeah. Um, what's Julian's biggest sort of like epiphany mind epiphany. Yeah. Mind don't, blowing over the last year. Don't just try to think long-term, right? Think a hundred percent, expand, expand your view, right? If you're really serious about building a business, expand your view and and really figure out, you know, niche down. Um, I think that's it. And the second thing is don't just copy everyone. I think, I, I think we all suffer from that already. I know I did just copying people's ads, copying their thing, but it's like, you can't, you're going to be in competition with these other guys. And if you're thinking long-term, you can't do the exact same thing, uh, exact same thing and compete with everyone else. You have to make your own sort of blue ocean. You kind of have to separate yourself. And part of that is niching down. And um, yeah, I would say those two things. That's awesome. I think the long-term thinking um, 
is one thing that beginners and even people like you and me who, are, who have been running it online business for a while we suffer like crazy from like yeah all of yeah. the pressure and anxiety you put in yourself because hey you might have this goal of a million dollars a month one day which is a great yeah. goal to have so yeah. the reason that you get upset and the reason that you have anxiety or stress about your yeah. goals not reaching them it's yep. not because of the goal itself. It's because of the time horizon in which you're trying to accomplish the goal. 100%. You know, if you say, I want to make 10K a month by the end of my life, it's a pretty unstressful goal. Like, you know, you have a lot of time 100%. to get there. Yeah. But if you say, I need to get there in the next 30 days, that's where things you're like, holy crap, I need to sign five clients now, which, you know, it can be good when you're broke. Like, hey, maybe you do need some money. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, after you've kind of pulled yourself out of the out of the weeds here, you're, you're making at least enough to put food on the table and pay rent. Like now it becomes a game, a long term game. So 100 percent. And it's like it's like Hormozzi said, it's like, um, you know, you can if you're starting in your 20s, you can 100 percent be a millionaire by, you know, by 30. But it's like people I forgot what he said, my bad. But um, pretty much he was just saying people just want to become a millionaire a millionaire in the next six months instead of thinking long term and not putting all that pressure on yourself right yeah and i think yeah i think what he said was something like you know if you were would you rather sort of like take you take your chance or be guaranteed to be a millionaire by 30. yeah yeah and it's like yeah you know you could take the chance build this huge software company and have it fail potentially or build this huge you know tech yep. company and and think big or you could kind of build a business that like it, it's known to work and, you know, so online service-based business that's that's proven to work. There's not really a huge risk to it, and it's a huge cash flow machine. And you know, you're almost guaranteed. You know, yep. if you do that consistently, it's pretty guaranteed that you will be a yep. millionaire by 30, if not yep. a lot sooner than that. So yeah, 100%. Um, anyways, dude, thanks for hopping on. Yeah. If you guys, if you're a real estate investor and you watch this video, 100% Jillian's your guy. Um, don't know if a lot of real estate guys watch this or not, but. If not, he also posts a bunch of other helpful content. So follow him on YouTube, follow him on Instagram. Those links will be down below. Yep. Um, but dude, thanks for hopping on. Any last Absolutely. regards you you leave anybody with? Yeah. Oh, just a quick thing. The only reason I Jane uh, joined Grayson's program instead of everyone else is because he niched down with his ads and he called out his ideal uh, his ideal clients. If you're a short form agency, blah 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 blah, right? He called me out, so that's why I joined it. Right. That's a perfect example of niching down and figuring out who your ideal client is and talking in their language. He talked in my language. I related to him and that's why I joined it. So that's a perfect example. Boom. Killer. Yeah. And even though for people watching, I don't work with short form agencies anymore. So yeah. <laughs> I'm working well, with two yeah. months but, ago. <laughs> but yes, yes. That is a great point that like the more you yeah. niche down, like, dude, that's a freaking niche and a half, you know, <laughs> working with only short form agencies or like you working with real estate investors. Some people might hear that and be like, dude, but what about all the other businesses I can help? It's like, yeah. dude, you got, you know, all you need is 10 to 20 solid clients to do there's, real there's tons. Yeah. There's an abundant amount of people to help. Don't don't worry about it. Yeah. Sweet dude. Well, thanks for hopping on, Jill. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. All right, peace.